Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I figured I'd do a therapy session because uh, I just felt like talking. Kind of been in the house today for the most part because I overslept and found myself, uh, you know, up barely getting out of bed like 1030. And I knew I had Bible study today. It was a good session um, of Bible study and everything, but I wanted to make sure I was in the house for it. Uh, so I just did a little art, watched the end of the game seven of uh, Orlando and Cleveland. Had a great time with, uh, you know, just kind of lazing around and, uh, you know, just took it really easy, man. Did my, my push ups and everything. Didn't do hundreds and all that, but, you know, I enjoyed my day. And of course, Drake dropped his response to, to, to what's, you know, the latest offering in the Kendrick Drake beef. And, you know, I was able to kind of listen to the reactions to that and everything. And, uh, yeah, man, took it took it easy, of course. The Bible study was at 4.30, enjoyed that, napped a little bit. For the most part, I've just been up looking at everything online. Um, my ex, uh, not ex-girlfriend, ex is in Twitter. Account got suspended. I have no idea why. <laughs> I didn't do anything that I know of that would have gone with that type of um, situation. But, yeah, that was a little weird. All I was doing was reposting f funny memes about um, what was going on with the, with, the, with the feud there between Drake and, and Kendrick. So I don't, I have no idea what they suspended me over. I truly don't. <laughs> if anything, I was unfollowing sites. Uh, that, that I had long had followed that needed not to be followed, just like I was doing on uh, Instagram. And uh, did a little more of that, too. I followed some people on Instagram, trying to get my my following uh, number down to something that looks reasonable so I can start following accounts that, that have meaning to it. And, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, man. But, you know, um, what I'm really on here to say is you know, while we're paying attention to this Kendrick Drake thing, just like I was, as I was saying in my last couple of therapy sessions, uh, it's a lot going on in the world that has nothing to do with entertainment that really needs our attention. And right now, um, that's exactly what's happening, man. I was just looking on Instagram and just saw like three or four new people with, who were holding their children, you know what I mean, who had lost their lives fresh new circumstances such as those and um, then I saw something that said that they were evacuating East Rafa telling those people to go to a safe space like they did five months ago in another part of the region where they were telling people to go to safe spaces and there were no safe spaces they bombed those spaces they bombed the people while they were transferring themselves from one space to the next after being told to take a certain path they bombed the path that's what's happening right now, man. And uh, in this ongoing genocide, it was 128 days or even more than that. I lost count. I don't know how many days it's been. I really don't. 200 something days. I don't know. I've lost. I've completely lost count. And uh, it's just one of those situations where we're all paying attention to Drake and all of this, but Kendrick. Um, they're bombing the hell out of kids, man. And that's what I've been trying to wrap my mind around for the last six months. You see, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, eight months. It's 200, what, 200 something days? I don't know. My math is not helpful right now, but I just wanted to get on here and say I'm not distracted, man. I'm, in, I'm entertained by what I'm seeing. I'm enjoying the basketball. I'm enjoying all the, the hip-hop stuff, but I'm not, my eyes are never off of that. I don't want all of you guys to be able to do that, too. We got to find a, a balance. I mean, you don't want to throw yourself into one side or a, too far into one side or another on any subject because there's so much to pay attention to and so much to focus on in your own life. So much, it's only but so much time we have left. So you want to enjoy your life? 
but you know there's real stuff out there and there are a lot of people who don't get a chance to enjoy their lives and they are suffering things that many of us don't know how bad it feels to go through those things we don't know nothing about those type of realities when you gotta load your child into a car and go bury them yourself I just saw like three or four different posts like that like it's just absolutely unfathomable for us in the western world who don't have to experience that in any way God forbid you lose somebody you at least have the decency and the privilege of you know some uh, an agency doing with their remains what you would want putting them somewhere cold being able to bring clothing choosing what type of clothing you want them to wear you get the whole funeral and the whole you know depending on how much money you have you can afford to send them home the right way these people are losing those kids and then they have to load them into their vehicles and take them somewhere or walk them down the street holding them in their arms like these are the type of things that are people that people who are making these decisions to send 20 billion dollars over to Israel to kill these kids these are the things that they do not have to experience in their lives they do not have to even enter their minds into these spaces where this is a reality and what the propaganda pushes those who want us to believe that Israel's the good guy what they're not acknowledging is that there are people like myself who are seeing this in their phones they want to tell you that you're not supposed to take the protesters seriously or that this is not your fight or that there is some justification based on revenge or based on terrorists who may be hiding in in the midst of, of, of these people who are being bombed that we have allies who are involved in this fight so we shouldn't look at it as a genocide but more so as a conflict that we need to support all of these different things that are being pushed upon our minds and then not acknowledging the trauma that people who are going through this are dealing with and then furthermore to a much 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 lesser degree the trauma that people like the protesters and myself are seeing in our phone that is what's not being acknowledged and that's what I want to turn on my phone to say there may be somebody who's looking at at this dark screen here listening to my voice who may have saw something on CNN that may tell them that this is something other than what it is I just described and what I'm telling you is if you trust me to tell you the truth about my Laker basketball team or you trust me to tell you the truth about my day to day life as I do then you need to trust me when I tell you those people are liars and they are painting a picture that is not true We are not learning all of this information from some rival propaganda that is controlled by terrorists. We are learning this from individuals who are going through this, who we happen to be connected to online because of how long this is going on and because of the bridges that have been built in the process of it online individuals that we follow that we've learned to trust because they've shown us nothing but truth while they're telling us on our TV screens here in America that you know, Hamas and the Palestinian people are killing babies what I'm telling you is this is undeniable proof online that I'm seeing that's telling me the opposite the very opposite And they do not want us to know this, and they don't want us to respect the word of people like myself who are seeing this, who are, who are speaking out against it. They want you to look at me as a terrorist sympathizer, 
And what I'm telling you is, unless terrorism is a response to mistreatment, then the word terrorist does not apply to people who are having this happen to them. Because the only thing they're guilty of is hitting the floor when they are hit with bombs. That's the only thing they're hitting. That's the only thing they're attacking. It's the ground with their bodies as it falls. I'm telling you, this is, if nothing else, an a, a elaborate lie. Elaborate lie that they're trying to paint that we all clearly see up underneath the curtain of. <laughs> and those of us who are wrapped up in our ways of thinking and our norms and what it is that we can fathom based on what it is that we're used to in our little worlds, a lot of us have to be awakened to what it is that I'm telling you. And what I'm telling you is there's something else besides what you're used to that you need to be listening to or paying attention to. It's something else besides what it is that you're enjoying that you need to understand that it's your responsibility as a person alive today to wake up to. We got to wake up. We can't just be caught up in what it is that we love to do or we enjoy what our little focus is and our need to enjoy our lives in the little moment that we're in and, and, and lose sight of the fact that people are suffering ills that really require our attention. There's something when you were at your worst moment in life and you felt the worst you've ever felt in your life. They're going through something 10 times more traumatic than that. And the only way they're going to be able to get the justice they deserve, get the support that they need, get out of the desperate situation that they're in, is if people like yourself and myself start to show a lot, not just a little, but a lot of compassion and a lot of attention. Give them that attention. They, they need it, and we need to understand the context for why it should be something that we are willing to give them. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how to do. How do I tell people who who don't know the first thing about horrors like that to extend themselves out of their comfort zones so that others can receive the attention necessary for their horrors to end? It's the most difficult thing to accomplish, in my opinion. It's to tell people who've never gone through anything at all that they need to adhere to the respect of the desperation of others. That's the equation for people like myself. How do we make you care about this? How do we make you respect this? If you were to go through what it is that they're going through, you would most definitely respect this. But there's no way to simulate what it is that they're going through. <laughs> There's no way for us to really, truly understand what it is they're going through and why it's so important that we speak up, speak out, and if, at the very least, not muffle those who are courageous enough to do so. Not shun those who are courageous enough to do so while we're sitting in our comfortable little lives wanting not the slightest bit of discomfort to enter our equation. I, too, do not know the first thing about the suffering that they're going through. All I can tell you is what I'm seeing in my phone versus what it is that I'm seeing on the TV screen when I listen to those who are supposed to be giving us news lie to us about what it is that's actually going on in my phone. I could look at the screen on CNN or the various different news stations and they're telling me Hamas this, Hamas that. And I look at my phone and IG and I'm looking at the people that call them Hamas. Four-year-olds, five-year-olds, no longer with us. Bodies cold, eyes closed or open sometimes. Skin blue. Gone. And suffering parents holding them. Some of them very strong, not even crying because their faith in God is that strong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, 
can't fathom that. You can't bring yourself to understand that. But you look at the contrast between how the American media is painting it versus what it is that's actually being seen on your phone and you understand that you are being severely manipulated and lied to, distracted by everything you've ever appreciated like hip-hop and sports and all these different things that just so conveniently peak at the time when they're doing their worst destruction toward these children and these people. The Super Bowl, big-time rap battles, NBA playoffs, Oscars. This is when Israel is striking them the most while we're sitting somewhere celebrating ourselves in our own comfort zones. This is when they pulse at these people the worst of of the times that they do them this way. When Kendrick drops a song, when Drake drops a song these last couple of days, these people been hitting Rafa left and right, killing new babies. I scroll up, I see Kendrick and somebody dancing to his song. I scroll down and I see a, another child passing away. It's like, this is not a coincidence, y'all. I am seeing this in my own with my own eyes and we're being lied to, man. It is that simple. We're being lied to. And whether you're on one side of the fence, whether you pro-Israel or pro-Palestine, uh, you, know, you need to understand the trauma that is being inflicted. You need to understand what it is that your news is not telling you. What it is that these, those who believe your news are not talking about. You need to understand what's there so that you know what it is that you support. If you're on the side of, of, of what Israel's on, regardless of what you think of what happened on October 7th, regardless if you think Hamas is the worst guys in the world, you need to understand. You need to really understand what it is that I'm seeing here. They're not killing grown people, man. They're not wiping out Hamas soldiers with guns in their hands. They're wiping out kids, man. Small ones. Babies. And I've been seeing this the entire time to the point where I've lost track of how long it's been. <laughs> Every day I see this on my IG. Every day. And I'm telling you, I cannot stress this enough. It's when we're celebrating something that they hit them the hardest. And tonight's one of those nights where they're hitting them the hardest, man. So that's what I'm trying to tell people, man. I want people to really understand this. It's the 5th of May, happy Cinco de Mayo. Every time we have any type of holiday, they are bombing these people harder. It's almost like they're celebrating as if the bombs are some type of, like, fireworks or something. You understand what I'm saying? It's ridiculous, the type of suffering that's going on behind our backs. <laughs> I hate seeing holidays come around because this is what it's been since October. This is what it is you'll see in your phone if you follow the people I follow on IG. It's not AI. Because you can see the flies buzzing around the white sheets that those babies are covered in. This is not a joke. I'm not trying to bring forth some type of... of, of, of trauma to you that, that is without merit if I didn't think some good could come from people being aware of what it is I'm seeing I wouldn't I wouldn't speak on it but I feel like there's somebody who could listen to me who could start being aware and being proactive in looking past what they're seeing on American Western news and looking into something maybe they maybe they can create an Instagram account starting today and just take a look at what Rizit Basan 1 is talking about maybe if they can hashtag free Palestine and start looking at some of the stuff that we're seeing here maybe, maybe they can find something that they're not looking at that can help them be revealed the truth and they can start becoming witnesses to whatever this is about to be next because we need we need it not just to be college students and people like myself who happen to have an Instagram account. And people in, in countries that we don't connect to that are aware of what our country is funding right now. 
while you're trusting your president or the next interim president, what we need to understand and believe is that Congress is owned by these people who are doing this. It don't really matter what president's in place. He's going to support Israel. You hire the next guy, he's going to support Israel. This is bigger than just a one-man deal. This is something that is really, really funded fully. And the most important thing we need to understand is that they have paid for a lot, if not all, of our government. They covered their backside. They have control over the media. They have control over the government. They have control over much of what we see and much of what is controlled, controlling us. So if you're waiting for the next president to step away from genocide, believe me, he's going to send another $30 billion over. As soon as you elect him, he's going to pledge his allegiance because that is what pays for our entire government at this point. It's going to be the people that rise up against this. It's going to be people like yourself becoming much more curious and a lot less trusting. Trusting of your, your news that has been telling you all your life who the good guy is, who the bad guy is. They're the ones that are too corrupted, just like your government. This is not a theory. These are truths. There have been liars who are starting to be revealed as liars. The only thing is not everybody's looking in the direction from which those revealings are taking place. That is what's really happening right now. It's not even about conspiracy. No, these are not conspiracies. We just got people looking in a different direction. Who've been taught all their lives to look in a different direction. We need those people to start turning their heads toward where this is happening. And for them to understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is something to see over here. That they're not looking at that they've been taught how not to look at. And as a result, it's some unfathomable sufferings that they, they probably would not be able to survive themselves that are taking place unfathomable sufferings for our western minds to try to wrap our heads around if I wasn't looking at it myself I would still be wrapped up in the idea that I should question certain things that I've been told to question but the only thing I'm questioning now is why are we still listening to those who have been lying to us about who is who when we've already been shown over 400 plus years what the truth is? So many different examples. They are vilifying college students who are standing up against the very things that they were taught to stand up against. But because it's a specific group who's imposing this energy, suddenly they're now being vilified as bad guys. You taught your kids to not allow for genocide. You taught your kids to not, not hurt people. You taught your kids how to educate themselves and be able to think for themselves. But when it comes to this specific topic, because so much of what makes this country go is funded by those individuals who just so happen to want to do this, Suddenly we're supposed to abandon all of those things and just fall in line. And I'm telling you, that is exactly what is being proven right now. That rather than to follow what we know to be right, we will follow who we know controls things even if they're doing wrong. And I'm telling you, that is what you actually see in here. That's why you're being told that those kids are, are doing the wrong thing in these colleges. Not because it benefits anyone, but because who controls everything is doing wrong. And because of it, they're going to tell you those kids are doing wrong. And the only thing they've done is oppose them for that wrongdoing. So I'm, I'm asking everybody who follows me to hear these words when I say them. What I've just described to you is far more severe than what I was able to describe. My words don't do it any justice. My understanding only provides it but so much clarity. My aptitude can only provide you but so much of the facts. There is so much for you to learn if you don't already know about what exactly is happening and why you should care. 
why you should care is the most important thing to figure out. Even more so than what's going on. You will open up that rabbit hole of understanding and truth in regards to this genocide. But you first have to enter into a space where maybe, just maybe, you should listen to this particular conversation, even though it's being done overseas. Because a lot of what the conditioning is in our country specifically is to is about making it so that we only but care so much about what's happening in other places. We only but care so much, unless we're wrapped up in the culture of politics, we won't necessarily consider what's happening overseas. That is a culture that is put in place on purpose, so we will not question certain things that our tax dollars fund that take place in those places. It is not pol a political conversation. It is a right or wrong conversation. And we need to get out of the culture of roping in things that take place outside of our country as political conversations. Your interest should not be considered a political interest. It is not politics. It is humanity. And you affect it with your indifference or with your funding in regards to every tax dollar you pour into this country they're sending it to places to do things they should not so it should not be put into a conversation about who our next president should be or what you want to uh, who you want to vote for or what it is that you will support politically that's how they keep our minds from entering those spaces Oh, that's not a part of our situation because it's another flag that's being waved. That's their problem. And that's where they keep you from focusing in on it, but you're still going to pay into it. And you won't know the first thing about that context because you've been taught to only rope those conversations into p the political box from which a lot of that stuff is roped into by way of how it's presented to us by the media. They only talk about these type of things on political platforms that is not by mistake we never talk about politics with your sports and as a result you won't necessarily be able to with the same mind you watch your sports with talk about these political quote unquote political conversations but that's the culture that needs to be broken down so that we can start having humanitarian conversations wherever we lounge they don't have anything to do with politics or whether or not we're going to vote Republican or Democrat or independent, but more so about how we're going to teach our children to not allow bad people to do bad things because they have a lot of money and a lot of power. <laughs> how we're not going to allow ourselves to be distracted, but we can interact because a lot of these different past times bring us together. So these are the conversations that should be had in those rooms, in those mindsets. We've been taught how to think, how to compartmentalize subjects, and as a result, we don't consider certain very important topics. That's why I use my channel to talk about the Lakers and talk about myself and talk about things I like and to talk about things that would be considered political. It is that reason why you see all of this on one channel. It's not by accident. I know exactly what I'm doing when I do that. This is why I do that. And so I want people to understand, man. Understand what I'm trying to do. It should be normal, very normal, to consider others and the sufferings and their triumphs when we're sitting back, relaxed, and talking about the things that we love to do. We should be able to celebrate people enjoy their sports, enjoy their music or whatever it is, and talk about how we can make the world a safer place for all of us. It should be fine to have those conversations. It should not be political to have those conversations. We should not feel like it's so important that we separate those conversations. That is a deliberate mind teaching thing. They're teaching us how to think. And most importantly, teaching us how to ignore and be bored by certain subjects. Understand what I'm saying to you. They teach you how to look at certain things as too complicated. 
too deep of a subject. But we can decipher rap lyrics and find quadruple entendres out of something that someone's saying in a rap song. But we can't come to the conclusion that we need to do a little critical thinking when it comes to some of the stuff that, that's going on politically, quote unquote. We can see how smart and intelligent we are as a hive mind when we start breaking down stuff that has to do with puzzles online when it comes to different TV shows we've seen, who did it, who done it. We can break all that down, but we can't focus just a little bit of critical thinking toward this Israeli-Palestinian conflict because it's over there, right? Children are dying for Many of you who are listening to me right now would throw yourselves in front of a bullet if you saw a child being shot at. Many of you would be strong enough to do so. And many of you would want someone else to do so if you weren't strong enough to. But you can't care about what's going on over there because it's too far away. Because it's Arabs who are having this happen to them. And we've been told those people are terrorists. And we're not going to think for ourselves because we trust the people who've told us those people are terrorists. These are the type of things that we need to break down. This is, this is what I'm learning must be attacked mentally. All of us have to attack that aspect of our training so that we can be useful to these people and find ourselves on the right side of history as it pertains to this particular fight. Like many of us would have wished we would have been on the right side of history as it pertains to past fights that were similar when it came to humanitarian stuff. You would have wanted to be on the right side of history when it came to the civil rights movement. You want to be on the right side of history when it came to the women's rights movement. You would have wanted to be on the right side of history when it came to what was going on at the Holocaust. You would have wanted to be on the right side of history of all of those things. Well, now is the time to recognize that this is the same type of thing going on. And whatever kept many people silent back then, it's a similar type of thing that's keeping many people silent right now. And we need to break down that deteriorate that and form our own moment and that's what I'm trying to help people do form your own moment man this is the time to get involved it's not the time to be a, a sheep following the wrong thing it's not the time to be focused on things that are not going to help this cause because it's going to take all of us every single one of us waking up and important in putting our thoughts and our minds in, in our prayers and our various energies and efforts into a solution that will get those who control us who just so happen to be destroying them out of the places they're in to control us all. That's what it is I wanted to say, man. My name is BDO44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.